He didn't die on the day. He wasn't abducted. They didn't storm the ground and install and swear in or Shiva Joe or anybody else. More and more people are believing in him now. And I think it's time for us all to come together, whether you're an articulator or an obedient or anybody else, uh, to join hands. The wake of days that have seemed to be a fearful days, fretful days, and days of agony, days of frustration to Nigerian citizens, okay? Um, things are going haywire with the political system, with the incoming government introduced by Asiwaji Bola Metinubu and Senator Kashim Shetima. Things have gone up so confusing for Nigerians who are perplexed, roaming the streets, going about their duties. The fuel subsidy has been reduced or have been removed. Let me just uh, be very sincere because um, Asiwaju announced um, yesterday uh, that this fuel, the fuel subsidy will be removed. But um, wholesalers and retailers of petroleum, gas and crude oil alike have jumped and swung into action. They have swung into action to see that... Um, the fuel price is hiked and then um, they've, they've come into it, a kind of behavior which they have always been used to hoarding and secretly hiding fuel and um, crude oil for um, monotonous purposes or sort of a monopoly purposes, okay? Yes, that is what is um, gracing the, the face of Nigeria over the last couple of hours, okay? My name is Angelo. Welcome to Nation Voice Tower. Now, um, an update touching my table. This is very, very touching, intriguing, and so, so revealing. So I decided to share it with our lovely viewers on Nation Voice Tower and this community. An update touching our table has revealed General Loki Elonye Erabo, who is the present Chief of Defense Staff, in a big dilemma. This dilemma is so big. Yes, we thought that um, it was only politicians that were involved in this high-class corruption, money laundering and stuff. Now we have um, somebody from the Nigerian army, um, the chief of defense staff, who is um, in a dilemma himself. Now this was revealed from a very, very reliable source. Now this was revealed through a private handle on Twitter, popularly known as 99% Oppressed. That is the name of the handle that revealed, the same handle that revealed the news about um, Sheyi Tinubu's um, alleged ownership of a multi-billionaire house in the UK. Okay, now, this particular Twitter handle has a simple username called at Pidom Nigeria. Okay, that is the username. Then the display name is 99% oppressed. Now, um, it exposed that after failing woefully, of course, truly we know the defense staff. And um, the truth is, he has been the defense staff since from January 2021 when President Mahmoud Buhari appointed him. So he's leaving office and um, he has to do something for his wife. He has tried to seek a job for his wife for so long but hasn't laid his hands on the particular um on the particular one so this time around um this particular exposition has revealed that he has come or he has laid his hands on a very very lucrative job for his wife and this job is more than just a job let me read straight from the twitter handle now it exposed that the chief of defense staff general lucky erabo in a last minute move has used his influence to land his wife, Victoria Amoli Erabo, a secret Magu Magu job with the Nigerian Security Printing and Minting PLC, Private Liability Company. Now, you may just see this information as a piece of information. After all, he got his, his wife a job, so why share it with us? Let me tell you why. Now, the reason is reactions have been sparked online amongst Nigerians and netizens alike on the sort of highly lucrative um, jobs our rich and mighty country statesmen and women are into okay and the outrageous funds wages and allocations are created to these jobs that is why i brought this to your notice now see from your screen you will see that she has a basic salary of 4.3 million naira okay that's 4 million 390,000 naira Okay, now um, she has a newspaper allowance of over 292,668 Naira and she has an entertainment allowance of 292,668 Naira and so on. The list could go on, you could see on your screen. So if she could have this sort of allocations to a job, who has a job of 4.9 million or 4.3 million? A job, a monthly pay job? Wow, that's very, very outrageous. So this has brought this. Uh, this actually brought our attention to this um this particular um employment um, provision or prospectus that was given to the uh, Mrs. Arabo, Mrs. Um, Victoria Arabo, the wife of the outgoing chief of defense staff. 
So we decided to share with our viewers why will somebody highly placed such as this have um, a grip on such a big job? Why wouldn't the poor people or the poor masses have a grip on such jobs? Now the question is, why can't these jobs be available for the common Nigerian? Alright then, why are such large funds not up for grabs at our places of work? These are the two reasons why I feel we should answer or um, this particular information be verified by the outgoing chief of defense staff. Okay, now the truth about Nigeria is that is how Nigeria is, and we need to change it. If not anytime now, with the new incoming government, this cannot happen with a new government. Okay, because we are urging and we are clamoring for a sort of stable governance, stable political system. A healthy polity and so on and so forth. So if our democratic system is sickened to the extent that the rich uh, just have a grip on the, 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 the frivolous things of life and the comfortability of life, that is an issue somewhere. Of course, don't forget Nigeria is a developing world. So we should also learn to fix uh, these things, in, including our economy, the way we perceive uh, job careers and so on, and the way we push forward for insecurity, security-wise, and then the way we push forward for empl employment and unemployment, and so on and so forth. Well, I would say this. My own take is this. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Lockie Erabo, really failed in his duty as the Chief of Defense Staff. Because for the past two years, we can't say he has curbed off insurgency, insecurity, and the wanton killings and um, kidnaps around Nigeria. Because as far as I'm concerned, we've recorded a very high uh, rate of kidnappings, insurgency, okay, takeover of villages and kingdoms, clans and areas, metropolitan places by um, kidnappers and then uh, armed men, bandits and so on. There is a high class of um, shootings, kidnaps, and so on and so forth, okay, in this particular regime. So what has uh, General Rabo done to really um, to really abate this particular menace from eating up the, uh, the roots and, uh, uh, and, and the baselines of Nigeria, okay? But all he could do is go forth and get his wife a lucrative job of a whooping salary of 4.3 million naira. This is outrageous. Thus, Nigeria is a country dented, sickened, and, well, kind of um, um, frustrated uh, with it, sort of citizens that cannot really fight for themselves, okay? Because we've tried to fight uh, for a, a stable governance for so long, and we have not laid our hands on any for a very, very long time. So, Nigeria has, you know, is a country where the rich continue to get rich, and the poor, poorer. That is what we have to do. So, we have to check and see that we we'll treat this particular menace eating up the polity. This is so bad for us. Now, secondly, I have a member of the Asiwaju Shetima Presidential Campaign Council, a popular man, very controversial, an APC chieftain named Femi Fani Kayode, uh, who is also a barrister, uh, an essay writer, and um, a columnist. He has um, surprised the world. This time around, I'll tell you what, Femi Fani Kayode has surprised every Nigerian. Now, let me tell you what he did. FFK, as he is fondly called, has been famous for its controversial nature over political views and perspectives over time, especially during the just concluded elections and the build up to the general elections. Now, the truth is this he has shocked Nigerians by coming forth in an interview from Yube State where he went for the swearing in of his um, friend and um, colleague, May Malabuli. Now, May Mala, the go Incoming governor of Yobe State has invited FFK for his swearing in which he was in which he was um, an attendant to or he was an attendee to. And then while in Yobe State, he made this particular video. Now, in this video, he is trying to establish a sort of united Nigeria in order to make the country work for the better, according to him. Now, FFK called on supporters of Atiku on, and the PDP, whom he referred to to as articulated people and he supp the supporters of the Labour Party and that of uh, Peter Obi, whom he referred to as obedience, okay? He would not stop calling on them because he has actually tried to show remorse and he, he, he has said um, that he, um, he will continue to see um, if Nigeria can be united, Nigeria can be one, there will be one Nigeria and so on and so forth. So FFK will continue to see if he meant his statement uh, for the actualization of uh, or the realization of a United Nigeria or if it was another political stunt pulled by the legal luminary. Let us listen and watch the video where he made that statement. Fellow Nigerians, it's uh, a great day for all of us. 
Why do I say that? After months of struggle, months of campaigning, months of fighting in the field of battle, under our commander, Ashuyaju Bola Ahmed Chinumbu. He was elected as president-elect. We passed that hurdle. The next hurdle was the inauguration. Now he has been successfully inaugurated. He didn't die on the day. He wasn't abducted. They didn't storm the ground and install and swear in or Shiva Jo or anybody else. He was inaugurated and sworn in as president of the Federal Republic, just as our leader, um, Senator Kashim, Senator Kashim Chatima was sworn in as the vice president. And so today we have a president and a vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And it signifies a new beginning, one of hope, a refreshing uh, beginning where all of us can look forward to a great future for our country. Many of us have confidence in these two great men to lead our country to the promised land. And I am very proud and honored to have been part of those that fought for what we have today. There are millions of Nigerians who have imbued this spirit of excellence and who believe that Ashiwaju will pre present, will provide the very best for our country and for our people. And I assure you that he will not let us down. Uh, more and more people are believing in him now. And I think it's time for us all to come together, whether you're an articulator or an obedient or anybody else, uh, to join hands and let us get behind our president and move Nigeria forward. I'm speaking to you today from Damatru. I came for the inauguration of my good friend and brother, Governor uh, my, uh, my Mala Buni of Yobe State. And I've been here for the last couple of days. Um, I'll be back to Abuja today. And um, honestly speaking, this was also a wonderful occasion. Both my Mala and so many other new governors and second term governors have been sworn in Yesterday, it's a new beginning for us all. So let's come together. Let's try to move our country forward. Let's operate in love. Let's build bridges. And let's make Nigeria great again. The foundation has been built, but now comes the building of the house itself. From strength to strength, we shall grow. I wish you well. I pray for our nation. I pray for our president and the vice president. May God be with us all. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. All right, welcome back. Uh, before we go further, I would urge you to please like, share, and also... Um, Tap the subscribe button if you are an incoming subscriber. If you are not already an existing subscriber, don't forget to tap the notification bell so you'll get updates from us anytime we drop any. Please, these things you do, these activities you help us undertake, make YouTube recommend our videos to people around you and people outside Nigeria and make it go viral, okay? Now, um, FFK, we don't know if it's a form of repentance. We don't know if it's a form of sukkah because um, his principal is now president. So um, we'll see whether... And he will get an appointment from the present government, first of all, for his hard work. And then we'll see if he really means what he said by fostering or establishment of a new United Nigeria. Finally, I have something quite divine. A Christian cleric and pastor, one pastor, Obina Michael um, of the Giftings Church, okay, has confirmed his prophecy about Asiwa Jubola Ahmed Tinubu, the president, and his new incoming government. The prophet said and confirmed um, the prophecy earlier, declared in 2021, uh, where he reiterated that only God can stop Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu because it was God who pronounced um, the presidency or the, uh, the, the appointment or the election of the presidency on Asiwaju, according to this pastor, because um, of a particular thing that has happened in the life of Asiwaju many, many years ago. He revealed that particular thing that happened in Asiwaju's life many many years ago and you watch it from the video uh, he also spoke of how asiwaju's wife that is um, Oluremi Tinobu, is the source of his power and is this is the source of his power and position okay let me allow you to watch and listen to the pastor why he made this declaration and confirmation to his church and congregation earlier it was here i told you people i did not miss words when i said it i told you what i saw it will take god the only person that can stop Tinobu is god Nobody, no human. If I in egg, let them gather 500. Nobody can stop him. Is God. Whether it is God. What happens tomorrow is God. What happens next week is God. What happens next to next 50 years, it will be God. Only God can look at him and say, No way. When I search, I told you I've not told you what happened. I will tell you. 25 years ago, God made a promise to that man that he will make him the president. You know where I made it? In Redeem Camp. Do you know who took him? The wife. It was the wife who took him. 
Take what I'm telling you. He said, I'll make you the president. But then, his heart was right. You don't know God. There are certain priests that the wife knows that she goes to. And she will remind God, remember what you told my husband. Ah. Ah. Yet we stay here. I know go agree, oh, I know go agree. Whether by rigging or by rigging. There are men now who could who are seeing things and say, ah, okay, okay, this was what happened. We can come this way. We can come this way. They are coming with the same covenant and say, Father, 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 did you give him by promise? You gave him a B, but Father, look at this. This was when his heart was right with you, but now, oh God, there's no other person again that God promised. No other person. Hey. Can I tell you something? The future of Nigeria is bright. No other promise. But you see this man. I want you to know that there are men who walk the corridors of power. Was he not a priest that endorsed him? Why was the priest not able to see 25 years ahead? To know that this man's heart will change. Don't kill Pastor Bina. Don't call me names. Someone, a priest among us, a pastor too, higher in rank then ordained him. Don't tell me so. I told you the inner chairman. I told you what I saw. I saw gun. I saw dollar. Not naira. Dollar. Dollar. You will say what was declared. Oh! I saw it. You can't blind my eyes for what I saw. Calling is fake. He didn't see anything. No problem. See small. A priest ordained him. And while they were doing campaign, the wife was going back to those priests to see them. Because this other one does not visit anybody. But this other one. And each time they take the umim and the thumim and they pour it. His face will come up. All right, all said and done, I would thank our viewers for keeping faith with us, always staying glued with us. I will also urge you and thank you so much for always um, keeping your eyes glued to Nation Voice Tower to stay updated with our content. All right, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to keep it with us today, being the continual hearing of the tribunal um, filed by our uh, petition filed by Peter Obi against the, the um, APC and the INEC. Okay, keep it with us today in court, the court of appeal to be precise. See you in my next video. Bye.